All right, time now to take a look at what's grabbing headlines around the world with Florence Villeminot. It was the big story in the French papers. Economy Minister Emmanuel Macron has decided to leave the government and it's getting a lot of attention in the international press as well. That's right. Macron reclaims his freedom. That is a headline you're seeing all over the world today. Uh, let's check out Courrier International today, which actually publishes an article from the left-wing German paper, the Süddeutsche Zeitung. You can see Macron reprend sa liberté. He's reclaiming his freedom and waving goodbye in this photo. Now, the Süddeutsche Zeitung says that by resigning, Macron is staying true to his reputation that he wants to dust off French politics and the old way of doing things. But some papers say that Macron's resignation is a good thing for France. That's right. Le Temps, which is a Swiss paper, explores that today. Uh, why Macron's resignation is good news for France? Well, they say he's competent. He has an international view on things, which is pretty good for France, which seems so provincial from outside. So you can see Le Temps uh, having a little jab there at the French government. Now, El Mundo, which is a Spanish paper, also praises Emmanuel Macron today. They say he's intelligent, uh, he's a powerful speaker, he in, he's inspiring, he makes people feel passionate about things. And you can see in this headline here, they go so far as to call him a Kennedy, uh, a JFK essentially, that is going to reform France. Well, I hope he doesn't meet the same fate. <laughs> well, he hasn't officially uh, said he's running, but this resignation has got to be a big blow for Hollande's government. Absolutely. Now, uh, until yesterday, Emmanuel Macron was Hollande's darling in the government, you can see in this article in the New York Times, they say that now it seems like Macron is clearing the path to possibly challenge Hollande in the uh, upcoming election. Uh, there's a very interesting article, if we go back to uh, Corée International, this is an article that comes out of Le Soir, which is a Belgian uh, paper. Uh, and you can see here, it says that in the end, Emmanuel Macron killed his father. Of course, that is metaphorical, uh, isn't it? And uh, this article says that what we're seeing here is Emmanuel Macron emancipating uh, himself. He's spreading his wings. He's ready to fly solo uh, with his eye, of course, on uh, 2017. Uh, he's ready to run against the man who made him because Francois Hollande really made Emmanuel Macron into the, the political uh, machine that he is today. Uh, and Courrier International says, uh, you know, and well, Le Soir in Courrier International says, get ready to see a merciless fight between Macron and Hollande. All right. So staying with French news, the prime minister is in the spotlight after making more controversial comments over the whole Burkini debate. That's right. Macron, uh, Macron excuse me, Valls has been a very outspoken about his outrage over the Burkini. He's a staunch defender of France's laïcité, state secularism. Now, his defense of French secularism took a little bit of a weird turn. Uh, yesterday, he was speaking at a rally and he said that Naked breasts are more representative of France than burkinis. Now, what, my, what uh, I keep calling him Macron, Valls, <laughs> they're rivals, maybe that's why. Uh, now, Valls says, he was talking about Marianne. Marianne is a symbol of the French Republic. You, might, you can see her here, actually, in the statue. Uh, and he says that Mac, uh, Marianne, not Macron, has a naked breast because she is feeding the people. Uh, she's not veiled because she's free. This is the republic. Now, the thing is, these comments uh, have drawn a lot of ridicule from politicians, but also historians. Uh, and you can read about it here in Libération. This is a, a historian named Mathilde Larère. She's a specialist, actually, in revolutions and in citizenship. Uh, and she's, she was outraged by these comments by, by, uh, by Valls. Took to Twitter for a hilarious rant, rant. And you can see parts of it here. Uh, just to quote one of her tweets, you can see it up there in the, in the right-hand corner. Uh, Marianne is bare-chested because it's an allegory uh, moron. So that's what she says. She calls him a moron. She says that essentially Marianne is a great graphic representation from antiquity. It's an artistic code that doesn't really mean anything. It represents the Republic and not French women. Interesting. Let's move on to another story um, that's getting a lot of attention lately. The EU is ordering Apple to pay a record-breaking 13 billion euros, as we just talked about with Will. That's right. And back taxes to Ireland. That's right. I'm treading on your turf here, Will. <laughs> but uh, let's take a look at the front page of The Guardian today that says that uh, Apple is raging over this uh, tax demand. And there's a funny cartoon in The Guardian where you can see the Apple CEO, Tim Cook, looking like a stereotypical burglar here, caught red-handed, that Apple symbol, a bag of cash in the background. Uh, so it seems to su suggest here that Apple is at fault. But if we look, take a look at the editorial in the Wall Street Journal today, pro-business paper, you can see they have a very different opinion. They're talking about the tax ambush. It's Orwellian and outrageous. 
Well, let's move on to space news. Uh, scientists are monitoring the skies with telescopes that say they've received a message from deep space. That's right. This is a great story. You can read it in The Independent. This is the uh, a scientific collective, in fact, uh, known as SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial ter Intelligence. Uh, they're very excited because they say a new signal has been found in deep space that could come from alien life. Uh, they say that this uh, signal appears to have come from a nearby star in the uh, Hercules constellation that is 95 light years away, which is actually relatively close at the scale of the universe. Uh, and they say that it comes from a planet that could support life. So they want to keep monitoring to see if this is a real message or, or just noise, because it, it could just be a mistake as well. And sticking with the end of independent, they have a great article uh, I also recommend that talks about dogs and how scientists have uh, discovered that dogs understand human speech. In fact, uh, they um, they understand uh, words. They understand the words you're, you're speaking to them in and not just the tone that you're speaking to them in. So you can't actually trick dogs by saying bad dog in a nice way. You have to say good dog in a nice voice. Thanks. Thank you very much, Flo. And that's it for now. Stay tuned. More news coming up.